about that game? Is you guys are like running around reading and answering questions. Usually if I just said, hey, read this and answer questions, you'd go, oh. Right? So learning can be fun too, right? So you guys did a great job. You were so fast I couldn't even keep up with you. Hey. <laughs> Try to take one of those with you. <laughs> did you get the answer? No? Yeah. These, uh, did anybody have this question? That was the porky part. These yeah. animals have clothes that do not come off their body. Um, you the porky know what it is? Porky is? Yeah, hedgehog. And the African porcupine's quills don't come off his body either. This one's dead. A porcupine? No, Miss Adrian, you <laughs> Alright, now Miss Adrian is going to show you an animal. Now here's the deal. If you're really good teachers and you're still and quiet, we're going to let you pet it. Okay? Okay? But only if you're really good teachers. Because it can get very nervous sometimes. Trust me, you're going to want to pet it. It has the softest fur you'll ever feel in your whole life. Okay? So you're going to be real quiet and give Miss Adrian all of your attention. Okay? Just like you did when I had the bird out. You guys did awesome. Tell me why the animal I was going to bring out. Is it a shirt? What? A chicken. This guy's name is um, Gigantor, and the reason why his name is Gigantor is because he's the most gigantic chinchilla we've ever seen. And we like to bring him out um, to show the kids when we're at shows because um, he's fairly new. We just got him last year, actually, and he's getting used to being around people. But also, because he's so big, there's a lot of petting area. And this is an animal that you're going to be able to pet uh, once we're done showing you. But chinchillas live in South America, and they live in the part of the country, they live in the mountains in South America. Now, can anybody tell me what are mountains made out of? Rocks. Yeah. What? Rocks. Rocks, right. We're going to raise our hands. Rocks. Now, chinchillas have a few ways that they protect themselves out in the wild, and one of the ways is their coloring. They live in the mountains, which are made out of rocks, and check out his color. He's the color of a... Rock. Right, so his color helps him to blend into where he lives. And what's a word for um, when an animal blends into where they live? Camouflage. Excellent, camouflage. So he has a natural camouflage that helps him to blend in where he lives because there's a, if there's a bigger animal looking for something to eat, if, if Gigantor is very still on the rocks, the animal might not even see him, might just walk right past him. We'll do questions at the end, okay? Now, the second way they have to protect themselves out in the wild is they have very strong back legs and a very firm tail. Now, this, their legs help them to jump. These guys can jump. If he was on the ground and he wanted to jump, and he's not going to do it today. But if he wanted to jump, he could jump straight up in the air, psh, about five feet high. That's almost as tall as me. So imagine, if he were trying to escape from an animal out in the wild, and he lived on the mountains, he could jump all over those mountains, pew, five feet, pew, five feet, pew, five feet. He'd be able to jump, and he would have a chance to what? Escape. Escape, right. Now, the third way they have um, to protect themselves is their hair. These guys can actually release their hair off their body. They can let it go. It doesn't hurt them. Their hair goes back. But if, say, a coyote were chasing him, um, and the coyote caught up to him, instead of getting a mouthful of chinchilla, he get a mouthful of chinchilla hair, nose full of chinchilla hair, eyes full of chinchilla hair, and ears full of chinchilla hair. So while the coyote is trying to get all that hair out of his face, what does Gigantor have a chance to do? Run, run. run away. Escape. Excellent. Now the last way they have to protect themselves, these guys are so brave. This is what they do. If he sees the coyote, he's going to run. First thing he's going to do is run. If the coyote sees him, the coyote is going to go, mm, mm, mm. It's lunch time. He's going to start to run. The coyote is going to chase him. Now, if the coyote gets him cornered, Gigantor will actually turn around and face the coyote. Look him right in the eye. He'll stare at the coyote. He will uh -oh, spit at the coyote. Chewy. He will bark at the coyote. Er, 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 er. And then he will stand up on his hind legs and go potty right in the coyote's face. Ah! Oh! 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 Now, do you think the coyote would actually want to eat him after he just went potty in his face? No. no. And if you went to McDonald's and you got a 
chicken nugget. I love chicken nuggets. Anybody love chicken nuggets here? Yeah. yeah. You have that chicken nugget and you're about to put it in your mouth. <laughs> and all of a sudden it spit at you, but chewy. Then it barked at you, and then it went potty in your face. Would you stick it in your mouth? No. no way. You would drop it and you would go over to Burger King, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then go with So they have some really cool ways to protect themselves as well. Now, I want to tell you another thing about chinchillas. These guys have the softest hair of any animal on the entire planet. His hair is so soft. But the reason why their hair is so soft is because for every one hair that we have growing out of our head, one hair, the spot where it comes out of our heads, on them, they have up to 60 hairs coming out of the same spot. So their hair is very, very soft, and it's very, very thick. Now, their hair is so thick that no air can get down to their skin. So these guys don't ever get any bugs like fleas or ticks on them because if the flea or tick was on their skin, it wouldn't even be able to breathe. It would suffocate. So their hair is so thick that, uh, that a bug would not put the questions at the end. Thanks. So, um, so they have really, really soft hair. Um, these guys eat vegetables. So they are called herbivores. Can you say herbivore? Herbivore. Herbivore. Very good. So you learn that. Do you know what animals that eat meat are called? Carnivores. Carnivores. Very good. Um, and I know somebody said his whiskers are moving. Did you see his whiskers? I did. Now, do you know why his whiskers move? So I'm going to show you something. When I move, his whiskers move. When I stop, they stop. When I move, they move. When I stop, they stop. When I move, they move. When I stop, they stop. See that? Now, the reason why they do that is because I told you they live in the mountains, and sometimes when they have to run away from danger, they have to run in between the rocks and the mountains. And do you, do you think it's light or dark in there? It's dark. It's dark. So they use the whiskers kind of like a walking stick. Did you ever see somebody who can't see something to have a walking stick? And it helps them let them know whether they're hitting any walls or not. So they use their whiskers to, um, to tell them whether they're bumping into any walls. We're going to get to pet it. Then what else do you want to You guys want to see her take a dust bath? Yeah. Sure. Yeah? yeah? It's really cute. Okay. And you can get that. Um, also, because their hair is so thick, if their skin gets wet, it's not very good for them. They can grow mold on their skin because no air gets down there. They can grow mold on their skin and their hair can fall out and then it won't grow back. So the way they clean themselves out in the wild, if they get any dirt or mud stuff in their fur, is they'll go into a rocky or dusty area and then they'll flip their bodies around really fast and they'll loosen up the dirt that's on them. So, I don't know if you'll see him, he's going to do a little, he's doing his little flip. <laughs> That's the way they clean themselves if they have any dirt caught on their skin or any um, <coughs> any mud. Do you want to do one more time, Gigantor? Okay, now I also said their hair was really soft. Now, years ago these guys used to be on the um, endangered list. And the reason why is because people all like to make fur coats out of chinchillas because their hair is so soft. Can anyone take a wild guess at how many of these little guys it might take to make one fur coat that would cover me? What do you think? Fifty or sixty? Anybody else have another guess? One. One, no. Twelve, one more. Five thousand. Five thousand, a little bit too much. It takes between 150 and 200 of these little guys to make one one coat that would cover me. So they have to they have to kill them for that. Isn't that sad? But nowadays we're really lucky because when you feel um, Gigantor's hair, you might have a coat or maybe a blanket or a pillow at home that feels just like his hair. So now a lot of companies that make a material or fabric, they make um, fuzzy fabric and it feels just like him. So they don't. a lot of people are wearing more fake furs than they are real furs now. Anybody have any questions before we pet him? Uh, yes. Oh, we might have to come back to you. <laughs> yeah, what's your question? Oh, he has a little gift. Yes. Another souvenir. You can take it home, Lucius. Yes. What's your question? He's not furry. What? He's very furry. You need to pet him. Yes. He left two. Yeah, he left two. Any questions? No, I covered anything, everything. All right, these guys live, um, they can live between 10 and 15 years, so they can live a long time, even 10 to 20 years, actually. So they live a long time. Kalia reformulated her question. You can't pet them.
I'm kind of. <laughs> I want to tell you how we got him. There was a girl the uh, a lab, not this not this past summer, but the summer before. A girl was going to college, and she wasn't allowed to bring him to college with her. So she asked us if we would take him, and we did. But these guys live a really long time. A lot of times, people don't realize when they get animals that they can live for a really, really long time. So if you get an animal, you have to you have to find out how long it's going to live. And you have to know that you're going to be able to keep it for that long. So it's really sad that his first owner didn't get to keep him, but we have him now. How long um, do they live? They live, trap, how? <laughs> it's like 15 to 20 years. So they live a long time. Um, and I'll tell you that. Um, when I first started working for Mr. Travis, I didn't know, I know I loved animals. Does anybody love animals here? Yes. You all do, right? And I knew I loved animals, but I didn't know anything about animals except a few facts here and there. But I didn't know anything about the chinchilla or the porcupines or the skunks. And I went on, where's a few places you can go to learn how to learn about animals? Anybody? Where did you learn? Online. I went online. I had sheets and sheets of information about animals. And I learned online about all the animals that we have at our center. How else? You can look in books. You can go to the library. You can, you can look in books and learn. You can ask a person like Mr. Travis, somebody that knows about them, if you have any questions you want to learn about any animals. Anything, I knew that anything I wanted to do, if I really wanted to do it, I could just go on the computer and learn about it. And now I work, you know, I've been here for three years and I've done a lot of shows for Mr. Chavez, but I didn't know anything about too many animals before I started working here, yes. Do I write about it? What? Do I write about it? I wrote, in, I wrote stuff for myself to memorize, to read. I wrote that way, but I didn't write a story. I'm thinking about writing a story book, yes. I'm going to start with the petting here. If you have any questions, you can ask me as I come by. You Stay in your Stay seat. where you are. I'll come to you. Yes. They live in the mountains. Isn't he soft? You see, I'm, I'm letting you pet his back of him because I keep his face away from you. He's very soft. Well, he's a little bit dusty now, but... Did you pet him? Okay. Patrick, get ready. It's going to be your way. He's got his bed. Don't pull his no, you can pet him. He's very nice. She's only showing the back. Do you want to pet him or not? No? Are you sure he's really soft? He's really soft. Jealous. He's going to get jealous. He's like, so why are the kids paying attention to the porcupine? Yeah, I'll come to you, sweetie. Beautiful little guy. You know? Oh, you're having? Oh, Grandma, boy. here too and she's going to show you this little animal there's that she's going to show you a lot of times people when we take it out Shaylin people get nervous but the truth is this is not an animal you really need to be afraid of there's stories about animals a lot of times that we hear that really are not true do you guys know what the most dangerous animal on the planet is you're sitting next to it Human beings, by far. You know what the second most dangerous animal is? It's this big, it flies around, and most of you probably have been bitten by one. Mosquitoes. By far the second most dangerous animal on the planet, because they carry diseases. Here we're lucky, they're not that bad. Okay, But this is certainly not one you have to worry about. So this is Charlie. And Charlie, who are my two girls? They had a question about Charlie. Where are you guys at? We're the two girls that I was oh, during the Save the Planet game. Right there, right? Yeah. And what was um, he called? Do you remember what he was called? Oh, uh, Porcupine. Pre a prehensile... Porcupine. A uh, prehensile tail porcupine. That's right. Come on, Charlie. And what that means is when you look at his tail... Can he hold the banana? Uh, he is. You're going to see him hold it. Oh, my God. When you guys 
just look at his tail. Do you see this? This is called the prehensile tail. It's right here, Charlie. Here you go. Oh, his back is to you. I'll turn this around. Well, now you get a good look at his tail, right? So his tail is a prehensile tail. What that means, any time you see that word in front of an animal, it's named, that means that their tail actually acts like a fifth hand. So they can climb up trees, they're really good at climbing, they can hang, um, sometimes they can hang off of it for a short amount of time, um, because it's a muscle, just like you guys, everyone make some muscles, Let's see your muscles. Just like those muscles that you have in your arms, that's what his tail is, okay? So eventually, his tail's going to get tired if he uses it too much. Just like your arms get tired when you go across the monkey bars too many times, same concept. So that tail is like a fifth hand. Now these guys are pretty unique in the fact that they have little tiny stubs as thumbs. So they can actually use their hands in ways that some animals can't. So, fortunately, you can't see them. Let's see if I can turn the table around. Travis, the man is going to do it. That's Travis, what you're doing being a man. <laughs> you want to see how dangerous she is? Charlie, don't let her smell your banana. See how dangerous she is? <laughs> Not real scary, right? Uh, they almost kissed. <laughs> so I don't do that unless anybody nobody's here. <laughs> so if you saw him, if you saw his little hand, you saw that he had kind of like a stub right here as a thumb, and as he's holding that banana, he's actually pushing the banana against that little stub there so you can hold it. Now he's got really um, sharp claws to help him climb too, and he's also um, got those hands that are pretty strong that helps him climb. So these guys live in the trees. You see he's got a tree kind of thing going on in his cage. And that other porcupine over there, he doesn't. He lives on the ground. He's a ground dweller, okay? So there's lots of different types of porcupines, and they all have a little different spe specialization to them, okay? So this one's got the prehensile tail that helps him climb. And that other one, he's got, he's bigger, and he's got longer quills that are more suited for being on the ground. Now both of them, when you look at their quills, you're going to see that they're black and white. See how his quills are black and white? What's another animal that you guys see here that are black and white? What's, it, what's that other animal you saw? A skunk, that's right. So that skunk that you guys see has the same kind of concept going on. That black and white, that's called an alarm color. He's got alarm colors. That um, porcupine over there, he's got alarm colors. And then you have that skunk that's got alarm colors. And there's even a snake in the front that's got alarm colors, okay? So that's the whole idea, is that black and white means, whoa, watch out, I got some. So he's got quills, right? Now a quill is basically a hair that's grown together and it's hollow. And it's basically a sharp hair, basically, that's hollow on the inside. See, I just pulled one out. Now, when you were to look at one of these underneath the microscope, you could see that there's little tiny barbs right up here. Now those barbs actually stick into your skin and when you try to pull it out, you can't because there's little tiny fish hooks on the uh, end. Not all porcupines have it though. That porcupine over there, he doesn't have barbs in his quills. But they still hurt really bad if they stick into you. Now who thinks that these porcupines, they shoot their quills out like this? Pew, pew, pew. You think so? They actually don't, okay? If he was to shoot his quills out like a little firing gun, I would be in really harm's way right now, right? But they don't, it doesn't happen like that. What happens is, say I want to eat him or I'm trying to take his food, he's going to put him up just like he has right now. And then what he's going to do, say I keep trying to go after him, he's going to start to thrash his little body around. And that thrashing is actually what's going to hit me, poke into my skin, and then when he pulls off, that's when those quills are going to stick into my skin. Now my boss actually fell on top of Charlie once. It was an accident. And he said that he had ten quills going up his arm like this, all stuck in there, and he had to pull them out with a pair of pliers because they were fish hooked up in there. So those quills borrowed in there, and uh, Travis said that it hurt pretty bad. Did it hurt? Yeah. I had to take pliers. Pliers to help me grab something really tight, and I had to go ah! like that ten times. So it wasn't fun. Oh, you got it. I don't want to kiss her like he did. But I'll touch her little nose. Right? It's like a little sponge. Here you go.
So, they're really interesting. Now, um, that porcupine over there, the African crested porcupine, he's got um, a rattle in his tail. And he actually, you can see him inside of his cage. When you go over there in a couple minutes, you can go take a good look at him. You can take a good look at him, and you can see, you might be able to see that he's got a rattle. On. I don't know what you want. The African one, you want to see that one? You want to take said? him out? Yeah. yeah, we can take him out. Oh, God. Can we take him out? Oh, man, we're going to take out all the animals, right? Let's take that one out. So we just let them all out, right? I'm not stealing your sweet So, believe it or not, this guy is a rodent. And that means that he's related to that thing up there, that cavy, that cavy right there. He's related to the flying squirrels. He's related to your hamster if you have one, the chinchilla that you guys saw. They're all related to each other. But he's not related to a hedgehog. Has anyone ever seen a hedgehog? Is it there? Okay, well maybe somebody who works here, Alana or somebody, can go get a hedgehog out. And you guys can maybe even touch him and you'll be able to feel what a wheel feels like. And you'll be able to see the difference. Okay? And when that hedgehog comes out, you'll get a good look at it. But they're not at all related. He's a rock. Right? You guys have any questions about him? No. No questions? How does he hurt people? Well, the only way he hurts somebody is if he thrashes into you and hits you with, your, with his quilts. But he's not going to try to do that to anybody here. Unless you're after a sweet potato. Well, no, it's not. There's no... In the quilts, it's, it's hairs, but it's not. What? Oh, that rabbit, though, that's a red. See this rabbit right here? He just said to me, well, this rabbit is um, black and white. Well, that rabbit's black and white because somebody over time has domesticated that rabbit to have that exact color pattern, okay? That's not a natural, um, random occurrence in nature. All right, so here we have a little tiny hedgehog, and Alana's going to show you that. I can't let you guys hold on, but I can let you pet him in a second. Hey, what did, he, what did he say? You see him following me? What did he say? Yeah, look. What did he say? Sit still and relax. His name is Sid. Sid Vicious, because he's got this punk rock mohawk here. You don't know who that is, but that's okay. That's okay. So, this guy right here, can he hold it? No, he doesn't hold his food. Sometimes he'll pinch his feet around it and hold it standing up, but he can't, like, pick it up. Okay? And, like, they were telling you, this guy can't shoot his quills out. He can't, hey, get back here, you little stinker. He can raise them up like this, and his quills are more like spears. So if something touches him, they're not barbed like this guy's. Do you still have that quill, Lauren? So if this quill touches me a little bit like this, it sticks in. Because those hooks Lauren was telling you about, they catch on to your skin, and it grabs on. That's no big deal. I can pull this right out. If I tried to touch a wild prehensile tail porcupine, when it thrashed at me, like Miss Lauren was telling you, it might drive almost the whole white part into my arm. And hundreds of hooks would grab on. And it really wouldn't come out, like she was saying. I, I really did have to get pliers to pull them out. These guys are not like that. They're just like spears. Okay, So I can touch them and they don't hook on. All right? But they still are good at protecting them. They spread them out, they push at whatever is near them. And she also mentioned it has a rattle kind of on its tail. They have hollow quills and they can shake them real fast and it makes a loud noise and it's kind of basically saying, you don't want to mess with me. It's letting everybody know it's there. Okay, So I'll see if I can rattle them for you a little. But I can't do it fast enough. Did you hear that? Did you hear it rattle them? Okay, so she made that real fast. Yeah, she's going wee-wee, that's okay. Uh, yeah. um, we can wipe that up, everybody can have some. Uh, yeah, well, you know what, here's the thing. It's, I, it's kind of okay that they do that, as far as I'm concerned, because it shows you they're not pets. Cats can be litter trained, right? Dogs let you know when they've got to go out. Porcupines pee on the floor. Uh, right? They just go when they've got to go. So, it, um, an eggplant. A piece of eggplant. Okay? See, as soon as he's done eating that, I will walk him back over there. Jeremy. Oh, no, these two wouldn't really get along too well. Uh, <laughs> that probably wouldn't be a great idea. Right, Sid? Sid, come here. 
I know you want to protect that. I got more. <laughs> Watch out for the wee ones. Come here, Sid. Hey, come on. Now, wait, how are you in the wild? Do you have a pork pie? Yeah. Oh, I like pork pie. Oh, he's still pink. Yeah, I'm just fine. I'm just fine. And it's off my shoe. And what happens is the quills get infected, and that infection actually takes over the jaguar's body, and that's what ends up killing them, not the actual quill itself. Okay, so if you guys hear that myth that if you get shot by a porcupine, you're going to die, that's not necessarily true. What happens is the quill, then the area where it got shot or hit, gets infected. Because jaguars, do jaguars have a vet to go to out in the wild? No. No, right? So eventually, it'll take over their body if they um, if it doesn't heal fast enough. So. <laughs> oh, look, you see Charlie ran right in. <laughs> That's his little safe box, Charlie. This is Charlie's little safe haven. He said, get me out of here. I'm going to go put him back. And they're going to take take you guys around and tell you about the hedgehog, and you're going to get him ahead of him. So you got to feel what's going on. All right. All well, the excitement's out of the way since I have to touch out in my room. All right. <laughs> I understand. Um, so um, this is an African pygmy hedgehog, and they come from Africa. You guys probably have to figure that one out, right? Pygmy is a word that means small, so they're smaller than some other species of hedgehogs. This guy here is Spike, a little boy hedgehog. And one of the reasons his name is Spike is because he has quills just like Charlie and just like Sid. But his quills can't come out of his body. They're always in his body. And my partners, when we played um, the Save the World game, we had a question about hedgehogs. You remember what they do to protect themselves? You remember? Well, the, the wall goes they, up around. They what? They roll themselves around into a ball. They, ro they curl up into a ball. Because they have these spikes or quills all over their back, but they don't have them on their belly. They have soft little fur on their belly. And so if a big hungry animal, a big hungry coyote or something, came along and wanted to eat Spike, well, he would probably go after Spike's belly because it's soft. There's no quills that he would get stuck in the mouth with. So what Spike will do, he'll curl up into a ball, he'll tuck his head down into his belly. That's usually how they sleep, too, um, so that they're not taken by surprise. And then that way, if some hungry animal comes along and tries to eat them, right, they're like bite-sized for a hungry animal, aren't they? Even if I were really hungry, I'd probably like, oh. And what they'll do when they roll into a ball, these spikes stand straight up. And their spikes are just like a porcupine's quills. They're hard in hair that's hollow. Now, unlike the porcupines, these guys, the hedgehog spikes won't stick into you, but it will make your hands really itchy if you handle them for a while. Now, Spike here is pretty tame for a hedgehog, and he really won't ever turn his spikes up. He doesn't usually turn into a ball when I handle him. And that makes it really, really nice because it means that when I bring him around, you guys can pet him, that you won't get stuck with his spikes. But we need to be careful that we pet him up in the right direction, right? We don't, we don't want to pet up. Well, you might get stuck with his spikes. They won't stick in your hands, but they might prickle you a little bit, and then they're going to make your hand itch. Now, before we get to pet them, I want to tell you just a few other things. Um, there's hedgehogs found on almost every continent of the Earth, not in the really, really cold climates like Antarctica. And they're not found here in North America. So even though sometimes when I tell kids about hedgehogs, they go, oh, I had one in my backyard yesterday. I know that they're making that up because we don't have hedgehogs here in North America. One place that they do have a lot of hedgehogs is in Europe. And in Europe, they really, really like hedgehogs. And that's because of what hedgehogs eat. Hedgehogs are carnivores, which means they eat what kind of foods? They eat meats. And, but not really the kind of meat that we normally think of. They actually eat insects and bugs and things like worms. So we could actually call them an insectivore. Do we like insects and bugs and worms? No. no we have them. Not usually, right? <laughs> so, um, people in Europe will actually cut little holes in the fence of their garden, just big enough for a hedgehog to fit through. And they're nocturnal, so they'll come into the garden at night, and they'll eat the insects in the garden. In one place, if we don't like bugs anyway, but one place we definitely don't want bugs is in our garden, on our vegetables, right? Or if we have a rose garden, we don't want the bugs.
hedgehogs to destroy that. So people in Europe really, really, really like hedgehogs. We like to have them around. They're kind of like a good luck symbol. So, do you guys have any questions about hedgehogs? No. No. <laughs> they have a lot of like a walk How they just How they can curl into a ball? Very similar. Yeah. Jaden? spikes might feel like. And remember, theirs are much, much bigger. Can I pay No, 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 you had your chance. Everybody else has to get their chance. I'm going to get a picture of his face. Okay. <laughs> 